Now that we've looked at most of the features available in the step sequencer, let's look at the information at the bottom of the screen. Uh, but first, before I do that, I'm going to uh, mute this track so that way uh, I won't be quite so distracted by the sound. So I press square, and now the track is muted. On the far left, you'll see an X and a Y that indicate the location of the current selected step. While they don't serve much purpose when using the step sequencer, they will serve a purpose once we really start modifying synth parameters. After X and Y are LP and MS. These indicate the current active loop and, if we're playing back a song, the current measure we're in in that song. When PSP Seek is first started, we're in loop mode, so the sequencer keeps playing the current loop over and over again. If we're in loop mode, uh, MS is grayed out. Uh, it's only active in song mode. The songs in PSP Seek consist of sequencing a series of loops together. Each song can have up to 100 unique loops, and it can be up to 1,000 measures per song. The term measure isn't exactly correct, as each time you place a new loop in the song sequence, you can tell PSP Seek to play the loop from 1 to 99 times. The current loop you're working in is determined by looking at the name next to LP. When PSP Seek starts this number is 0, by pressing the left and right triggers, you decrement and increment this value. If you decrement from 0, you end up at loop 99, incrementing from 99 ends up at 0. I'll talk more about composing songs out of loops later uh, in this tutorial. After LP and MS are four items which make up the transport. They control whether we are in loop or song mode, if the sequencer is running or stopped, the beats per minute, the song, and also the overall song volume. I'm going to unmute the, uh, this track again so that way we can, we can play around a little bit. So, so now the BAM1 track is unmuted. Uh, to access the, uh, the transport, you press the select button. So press select. Once you do this, you no longer have access to the sequencer, but you can access the transport. Uh, you know you have access to the transport when the parameter to the far left, either a loop or song, uh, goes from gray to white. So we're in the, you can see we're in the transport now. Uh, pressing select again leaves the transport returning control to the step sequencer. So returning to the step sequencer. And now I'm going to go back again so that way now we're accessing the transport. And actually note that, that we don't actually start on, on loop, we start on play. Uh, to move between parameters uh, in the transport, you use the D-pad and you press left to right. So if press left, we go and highlight loop, press left again, highlight vol, left again, BPM, and right brings you back around again. So uh, we're going to start by modifying the loop parameter. So in order to actually change this parameter, uh, you press the D-pad up or down. If this value is looped, then the sequencer plays the current loop forever. And if this value is song, then the sequencer uses the song sequence information to play back a series of loops. The method of entering in loops and repetitions is covered later in the tutorial. Also note that if you're in song mode, while using the step sequencer, the left and right trigger buttons serve a different purpose than while in loop mode. If you're in loop mode, then the loop number increments and decrements by one, by pressing the left and right trigger. In song mode, pressing the right and left trigger uh, causes the sequencer to jump to the next measure. This makes it easy to quickly navigate to a particular part of the song, but it's not possible to get to loops not in the part of a song list uh, when you're in song mode. Also note that unless the sequencer is halted, when you're in song mode, you can't access any of the menus in PSP Seek. The next parameter is play stop. To change this parameter, press the D-pad up or down. So I pushed the D-pad up, and we went from play to stop. Uh, if it's set to stop, the sequencer halts, and all audio is muted, and the blue dot at the top of the screen also halts. If you don't hear anything out of PSP Seek when you think you should, make sure the sequencer isn't halted. If you press X, if you I'm sorry, if you press X while on the top, uh, while on top of play stop, the, the sequencer is reset. So I'm going to press X right now and the sequencer is reset, and we went back to step zero. So you can see that the blue dot went to step zero, um, and the sequencer is completely reset. Uh, if you do the same thing while you're in song mode, then not only is the sequencer reset, but you're also sent back to the first uh, measure of, of the song. Um, and now if I press up on the D-pad again, you can see that we start again from the first loop, from the first step in the loop, sorry. Okay, 
Now the third parameter is uh, BPM. So I'm going to press to the right and enable BPM. Uh, this is controlled by either using the analog pad or a digital pad up or down. Uh, the analog pad allows for very fast control, and the digital pad allows for very fine, uh, very fine control. So if we want to change the BPM with the analog pad, um, here we can we can push it up, and we can see that the BPM is going faster. The sequence plays faster. And the blue dot moves more quickly across the top of the screen. Now the slowest the sequencer can run is 1 BPM, and the fastest is 999 BPM. And also note that the new BPM value is only loaded once the sequencer moves to the next step. This means that if you set the sequencer to run at a very low BPM, and then try to speed it up quickly, it'll take some time to react. And also note that the BPM is set assuming that each beat is 8 steps in a loop. This means that if, if 64 steps is equivalent to 2 measures of 4-4 uh, time. If you don't need that resolution, you can divide the BPM in half and place twice as many hits in a loop, or you can double the BPM to allow for extreme timing control but only one measure per loop. So I'm going to bring BPM back down again. Closer to 120. Uh, the fourth parameter is vol, and this controls the overall output volume of all tracks. So now press D-pad to the right and select vol. And uh, this can also be between 0 and 999, and uh, it is also controlled by pressing either the analog or digital pad up or down. So the digital pad up or down allows for very slow control, and using the analog pad allows for very fast control of the volume. So you can adjust this all the way up. I'll bring it back down to a more reasonable volume. And also, if you look on the upper left-hand side of the screen, you'll see um, that there's an oscilloscope. Um, along with being pretty and fun to look at, it also gives you an idea if the output is close to clipping or not. Uh, once you're done making a song, you probably want to maximize the overall song volume uh, to make it as close to full scale as possible without clipping. So as you could hear before when I brought the volume way up, you could hear that distortion, and that distortion is because the output is being clipped. Uh, this covers most of the functionality available in the sequencer screen. To access all the other features of PSPSeq, you'll need to open the menu system. To do this, press the start button while either in the sequencer or the transport.